Hey, what's up guys? It's Drew from Taylor Tech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these cheapo LED light strips into a Wi-Fi enabled one. And yes, Wi-Fi meaning you can control it with your phone or through your home automation system. Uh, the possibilities are pretty much endless once it's connected to Wi-Fi. This is the controller itself. They range from about five to 10 bucks. I'll leave a link below so you can pick one up. The way it works is the light strip end goes in this end, power goes in this end, and the Wi-Fi chip inside is what allows you to use your phone to control it. Straight out of the box, you can actually just download the app that it tells you to download, and you can hook up your light strip, hook this thing up to uh, Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. You can start using this thing with your phone. But to unlock its full potential, we're gonna flash a custom firmware onto this and be able to control it with our SmartThings home automation platform and uh, use it just like a Philips Hue strip light would. Let's get started. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Philips Hue light strips, here's an example here. This is the light strip plus second generation. It, um, it's, it's really good light strip, don't get me wrong. The LEDs on there are very bright very vibrant but you can pick up a strip like this that's very similar or the same possibly uh, maybe for 30 40 bucks and hook it up to one of these controllers and um, be able to do just the same thing that this one can do granted it, it won't work with the Philips hue bridge and all the other hue lights but that's the idea of this whole thing to save some money by um, doing this the other way and if you see down here it says new enhanced six foot hue strip light it only gives you six feet this uh, strip that I got is 16 feet so almost triple the length of that and yeah you can extend it up to 33 feet but I think they're 20 bucks a pop each six foot section so with the bridge and with the couple extensions you're looking at 100 60 180 bucks easily whereas this solution with the same high quality light strip you're probably talking 30 40 maybe 50 bucks so there's a pretty large significant price savings doing this method all right so here's the inside of the Arilix controller here's the full one and like you just pop off this plastic cover and this comes right out so what we have down here is our RX, TX, and ground. This ground, I just used a glob of solder to jumper the grounds. That's what puts it into programming mode. There's two ground slots. You put a jumper over those and then it gets put into programming mode. Then I brought this jumper, this gray wire, into the FTDI adapter, into the ground slot. And then with the FTDI adapter, I have red as RX from here and orange TX from here. And RX goes into TX on the controller and uh, the same with TX. So TX is orange, it goes into RX on the controller. Now full disclosure, if you guys are familiar with these FTDI adapters, this one is a very generic one that I got gypped on. Uh, one way to tell is by this gold on here another way is look at the back here it says yp05 this other one i have which is a I believe a genuine one it says ftd1232 on the front it's silver there might be a few other ways to tell but i'm not too sure uh, this one this one fried on me i'm not sure why so i ordered another one um, same amazon link that i used i got this one so I'm not sure what um, where they're getting them from, but this one does work for me, so I'm just going to use it in this tutorial. I'm not going to recommend against it or um, for it. I just heard that these do bad flashes, so use it at your own risk, but try to get one of these if you can. All right, so now that we got everything wired up, um, soldered in, you don't have to solder it if you don't want to. That's totally up to you. I just I just find that easier, it's quick and easy for me. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the computer. You will need one of these 
many USB cords to do so. All right, now that we're ready to flash it up, we're gonna go ahead and plug this into power and we will go into the PC to get it ready to flash. All right, the next step is to go ahead and flash. I'm not gonna go into detail here. Uh, I made another video on the Sonoff flash. It's based off the same ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. Uh, I, did, I did a full video on the flashing process there. So the only difference will be is you'll have this Arilix bin file in here instead of the sewn off one. So just disregard that part. Um, this will be in the link in the description as well as everything else you need as far as this ESP Easy software to flash it with. In the notepad, which you will see in the other video, it will look just like this. The only difference, once again, will be this Arilix section. So take the sewn off part out after the CF here. It'll say sewn off. Take that part out, add this Arilix, and you will be good to go. All right, so once you have your Arilix disconnected from your FTDI adapter, go ahead and plug it into power, and it should now broadcast a Wi-Fi signal so you can go ahead and go on your smartphone, tablet, or your, per or your PC and uh, get that set up. So this time within SmartThings, you will need uh, two different device types and a smart app. Once again, I will leave links to everything down below, but I will go ahead and just click on this. You wanna click raw. I will highlight all of this, copy, and then within in your SmartThings IDE, we will go into device handlers, create a new device handler, from code, copy the code in here, click create, and then we will save, publish, for me. Device type public successfully. So I will go back, this will be your second link for the device types. Here we are, this will be the RGBW virtual switch. So click raw, once again highlight, this one is pretty short, copy, go back to my device handlers, create new, same thing from code, paste, create, see up here virtual switch, save, publish for me, publish successfully, the last thing will be a smart app, so I'll go to my smart apps, in the meantime I will go back To this one. This will be the last link for the things you need to copy. Copy, new smart app from code, paste, create, smart life R G B W. Save, publish for me. And now we should be able to go into our um, SmartThings app on our device and add the Smart app, and then we will be able to search for the device. So in your SmartThings app, the next thing you're gonna have to do is install the Smart app that you added in the SmartThings IDE on your computer. So in order to do that, go to Marketplace, Smart Apps, and then My Apps down. And it should be in the list here, Smart Life RGBW Lite. I have two of them because I've already done this before, but if you click on it, it will show up in your Smart Apps. So go back to your Automation, Smart Apps, click here. And then after you have your Wi-Fi enabled on your controller you can click discover devices and it will pop up and then it, then you name it and it will show up down here from here you can configure different programs which the virtual switch works with this part is pretty cool because you can pro, um, configure six different programs for each light and they are you can do them yourself, like this timer one that I did by myself where it pinks 
where it flashes pink and purple when the timer on my Amazon Echo goes off. Uh, a few of these are not pre-installed, but you can import them here. If you go to import program, you can import the string. If you go to the SmartThings community forum, um, you can find the different strings to import. All right, so I'll show you what it looks like in your Things app after you have all this set up. So you go to your Things, and I just have them called Cab Light. And these are just all virtual switches. So fireplace, lightning, police lights, rainbow fade, uh, red flash, and timer done. Those are just a few things that I made myself. So I'll turn this lightning on. Pretty cool. And I'll turn this police lights on. I have this go off when my uh, alarm in the house goes off. So when you go to connect the lights to the controller, the black is power, which is the little triangle there. Green wire is the green light, goes to the G, R to red, B to blue, and W to white. If you have a RGB W light, if you only have RGB, you only connect the power, red, green, and blue. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something new. Hope I saved you a couple bucks on this one. I know those uh, Philips Hue light strips can get pretty outrageous with the price. Leave a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already so you don't miss out on any future content. Um, what else? Leave a comment down below of any future videos that you'd like to see. I'm kind of starting to run out of ideas here. I know they'll come up, but uh, I'd rather you guys give me ideas that you want to see before I just come up with something that I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in yet. So leave a comment down below of any questions or any recommendations. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will catch you in the next video.